Hi, this is GCSE 9 to 1 Crammers. It's never too late to start revising, and this way you can do it anywhere. Test yourself by stopping the video after each question, and have a go at answering it, and then play on to check it. Run through the questions as many times as you need, until the answers pop into your head. Today we're revising Chemistry Topic 1, Chemical and Physical Properties of Element Groups. And today we shall be covering Group 1, Alkali Metals, Transition Metals, Group 7, the Halogens, and Group 0, the Noble Gases. A copy of the periodic table will be given to you in the exams, so you don't have to learn all the names in each group. The group number will tell you how many atoms are in the last shell of an element. You also need to learn the chemical properties and the physical properties for Group 1, Transition Metals, Group 7, and Group 0. Learning the facts about each group will help you to predict reactions based on the position of elements in the periodic table, as well as comparing the properties of the different groups. You need to know all this stuff to help you answer any questions in chemistry, so always check to see which group an element is in, so you know how they'll react in a reaction. Group 1. Alkali Metals Lithium Sodium Potassium Rubidium Cesium and Francium What does the group number tell you? That all Group 1 atoms have one electron in their last shell. List the physical properties of Group 1 Alkali Metal Elements. I remember these by using the acronym M D S H or the mnemonic My Dad's Shocking. You can change it to anything that helps you to remember it. M for melting point, D for density, and SH for whether they're soft or hard. And group 1 alkali metals have low melting and boiling points, low densities, and they're very soft. List the chemical properties of group 1 alkali metal elements. I remember these by using the acronym RICC. R for REACT, I for IONS, C for COMPOUNDS, and C for CATALYST. Alkali metals react quickly with water and non-metals. Only form plus one ion, and form white colourless compounds, and they're not used as a catalyst. Transition metals. Titanium, manganese, iron, nickel, copper, etc. These are not all of them, but as you're given a copy of the periodic table in the exams, always check to see which are the transition metals if you're not sure. List the physical properties of transition metal elements. I remember these by using the acronym MDSH or the mnemonic My Dad's Shocking. M for melting point. D for density, and SH for strong, soft or hard, and transition metals have high melting and boiling points, high densities, and are strong and hard. List the chemical properties of transition metal elements. I remember these by using the acronym RICC. R for REACT, I for ions, C for compounds, and C for catalyst. Transition metals react slowly with water and oxygen, have ions with different charges, which are mostly positive. Transition metals form coloured compounds, and they're used as a catalyst. What is a catalyst? A substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without being affected itself. Exam-style questions. Compare Group 1 alkali metals with transition metals. This is usually a six mark question, therefore you'll need to compare both the physical properties and the chemical properties to get all the marks. Comparing the physical properties of Group 1 alkali metals with transition metals. This is where you need to remember the acronym MDSH, or my dad's shocking. Here goes. Group 1 alkali metals have low melting and boiling points, whereas transition metals have high melting and boiling points. 
Group 1 alkali metals have low densities, whereas transition metals have high densities. Group 1 alkali metals are very soft, whereas transition metals are strong and hard. Comparing the chemical properties of Group 1 alkali metals with transition metals. This is where you need to remember the acronym R I C C. Rick. Here goes. Group 1 alkali metals react quickly with water and nonmetals, whereas transition metals react slowly with water and oxygen. Group 1 alkali metals only form plus one ion, whereas transition metals have ions with different charges. Group 1 alkali metals form white colourless compounds, whereas transition metals form coloured compounds. Group 1 alkali metals are not used as a catalyst, whereas transition metals are used as a catalyst. Group 7 halogens. Group 7 halogens fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, halogens all have 7 electrons in their outer shell. Halogens at room temperature, fluorine and chlorine are a gas. Bromine is a liquid while iodine and astatine are a solid at room temperature. List the physical properties of group 7 halogens. I use the acronym BLEN to remember the properties. B for brittle when solid. L for low melting and boiling points. E for electricity. Halogens are poor conductors of electricity and heat. And N for non-metals. Why are halogens poor conductors of electricity? Because they're made up of simple covalent bonds, held together by weak intermolecular forces. Therefore, they have no delocalized ions to carry a charge. List the chemical properties of group 7 halogens. To remember these, use the acronym DIC. I <laughs> bet you'll remember this one. D I C. Halogens are diatomic, which means each molecule contains two atoms. Halogens form negatively charged ions and have coloured vapours. Group 0 noble gases. Group 0 noble gases include helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. Noble gases all have a full outer shell. They all have eight electrons in their outer shell, except helium, which has two. List the physical properties of group naught noble gases. The acronym used to remember them is simply NL, or not logical. N L. Noble gases are non-metals, and they have low melting and boiling points. List the chemical properties of group 0 noble gases. The acronym I use for them is FLIC. F L I C. Noble gases have a full outer shell of electrons, so don't lose or gain electrons. They're inert gases, which means they don't react with other groups, and they're colourless at room temperature. Exam style questions. When answering chemistry exam questions, always refer to your periodic table and know which group the elements in the questions are from. Knowing their properties and trends will help you with your answer. In terms of electrons, why is bromine in group 7? Because bromine has 7 electrons in its outer shell. Explain why lithium, sodium and potassium are all in group 1 of the periodic table. They all have one electron in their outer shell, so they have similar properties and react in the same way. 
State two properties of transition elements that make them more useful than alkali metals for making water pipes. Transition metals are stronger and harder, have a higher melting point and are less reactive. Give one useful application of transition metals. They can be used as a catalyst. Explain why aluminium does not react with argon. Think about the chemical properties of argon from group 0 to answer this question. Argon is a noble gas and has a full outer shell of electrons. So it is inert, so it does not react, because it is stable. Explain why sulphur and selenium are in the same group of the periodic table. To answer this question, you need to look on the periodic table to find these elements and you'll see they're from group 6 because sulphur and selenium both have six electrons in their outer shell. The key to exam success is learning consolidation and keeping this topic fresh in your mind. To nail those questions in the Chemistry GCSE Paper 1 exam, if you go over this enough times and you will be able to answer any questions on this topic confidently in your exam. This is GCSE 9 to 1 Crammers and if you like the content of this video give us a thumbs up and if you have a question or need help give us a comment below and don't forget smash that subscribe button if you want more Crammers videos for your exam success. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.